this you dump into acidic water. Even though I said it's kind of like years, well, let's say what could possibly form is kind of a good exercise, um, mental exercise. So let's do that. You're going to get the proton as an electron bound. That's going to be get by the high electrons. Same thing. That's the reason why the, the, the general mechanism of these chapters is an electrophilic addition, right? Electron bounds added first to the bubble. Electron bound in this case is a proton, not the water, right? The proton is attacked by the pi electrons. You're going to get the carbon cation form. And then which carbon cation you're going to get the most? More substitutory carbon. If there's a less substitutory side, more substitutory side, that carbon is probably better than the carbon cation. That's a mark of people. And that is a more substitutory. At the same time, these things are next to that state. That's a benzylic position. That carbon cation is going to be very stable, making resonance structures as well. So that carbon cation is a form. The next thing is uh, that carbon cation is captured by the water. You're going to get the proton goes away after that. You're going to get the alcohol. Very simple. Really simple. I'm sorry. Is one of these things to be H? That has to be H. We can change that, right? I forgot to write down. This, this has to be H. Anyway, so that, uh, that, that's the what it is. But I can change this question to make, make it difficult for you. It's pretty simple, but it is not that simple if I change the question like this. It's kind of the same looking, right? You got the benzene here, you got that part right there. You know, it's almost the same thing. So you're probably going to say that, yeah, of course, the proton's going to be added uh, to the carbon. It's better go to the less substitute side. So we get the more substitute side, becomes a carbon cation. And that's the tertiary carbon cation. So when that uh, is captured by the water, you're going to get an alcohol just the same way this one did. That looks like the right product, right? This is exactly what we talked about using this example. High electrons gets the proton. You're going to get the carbon cation forms, and that carbon cation is attacked by the water as a nuclear valve. And then losing this proton, you get the alcohol. So carbon cation is a form, and this the high electron get the proton, carbon cations get the forms, water makes an attack as a nuclear valve, proton's gone. You get that out there. Same thing, exactly the same thing. So that has to be right. But when you give me that answer, I'm going to say, no, that's wrong. Why? Why, why is that? Why is it something that you just follow exactly the same thing that you did before? But why that becomes a wrong answer? This is something that I've been keep telling you. What did I ask you to remember when you ever seen a carbon cation? Rearrange. Will this carbon cation rearrange? This is a tertiary carbon cation. I know that's pretty happy, but the thing is, think about the next position. If this hydrogen moves out, then you're going to get a carbon cation right next to benzene. And then what it does is going to make a loss of resonance structure. So this is a secondary carbon cation, but because it's next to benzene, that becomes a more stable. So resonance stabilization, that's the key for making this rearrangement possible. And that carbon cation is a main species, native species. That's the one they attack by the water, so you get this. I mean, that is a tertiary carbon cation. I'm not saying that it will never happen. But if you talk about the ratio between these two, is this going to be major? That's going to be minor. It's not like a 10 to 1 ratio, probably, is a more stable than that other compared we have talked about. But it's, different. it's probably going to be more, I mean, that one going to produce more than the other. So, so you can see that anytime you see compared, this is something that you really have to remember the arrangement. And then sometimes it will arrange, it changes the products. So even the simple reaction like don't take it to the acidic water, it can be difficult if you forgot about the beer as well. I'm kind of really one of my recipe of the making parts to be people already, but how many of you are going to remember to the end of the class, right? Sometimes uh, 
I ask the exact same question that appears in the text or something, the exact same question in the homework, and then they just still miss it. So I don't understand. And something that the points is really positive tense and it's not many of you real far stuff. But anyway, I'm, I'm already telling you the this is one of the way making the you know, acidic water, uh, dumping the acidic water to make the hydration reactions typical, real nature. Not the cell chemistry. But, but this is already, you know what it is. Oximercuration, demercuration. Reagents basically tell you what it is already. Only thing that you need to worry about, regional chemistry, stereo chemistry. That's going to make a rich ion, right? When you make a rich ion, Mercury can be a bottom, can be, can be top. That's your own personal choice. It doesn't really matter. In the end, you're going to have things in translation. That's what I like to see. Which ion, I put the mercury at the top. That mercury is going to pull the density from those two carbon. The more substitute side, we lose more. So water molecule, even as I said, even though I didn't write down, you, you can assume water is so there for the oxygen increasing demarcuration. The water makes an attack, but this attack has to come from opposite side where the mercury is. Mercury is huge. It already is occupied the top space. So only space available for making attack in the bottom side. So that's why the hydroxyl groups is a dash because it attack from the bottom. That pushed this methyl up, right? The backside attack. Remember that I said two reactions? By making attack, the whole thing travel to the other side. This methyl, I mean, I use a regular line, but it should be dash, right? It should be dashed. But water makes an attack. Dash comes to wedge because of SN2 reaction, the inversion of stereochemistry. That is what's happening here. That's why this methyl goes in wedge by making the water, comes behind, making an attack, dash, and wedge. I want you to get this right too. And then mercury definitely is still going to be on the same side because of it. it just released this bond, not changing that side. So that's still bonding with that. But in the end, the mercury is going to go away by the hydrogen. So you're going to get the hydrogen here and then the hydroxyl groups there. But the thing is that in the hydrogen, we don't normally write it down in the drawing like this. So it, that's going to be this. So that is the product of the oxymercury to demercuration reagents. If you can, what it is, you need to worry about regional chemistry, stereochemistry. But we're probably going to not do things like that because, uh, you know, by showing a region, it makes a question too easy. So, what we probably will do is ask you to make these things. Then you need to make a wise choice. What are you going to do? But anyway, we're going to talk about that issue a little later. So you probably have to get used to seeing the question like this. You need to figure out the agent that you need to use for the transformations. So these things, you can see that double bonds gone. So we added double bonds. What's got added? We got added the hydrogen and the alkoxy groups. Is this a Markov decorrelation and a Markov decorrelation? It's the first thing that you probably have to figure out. And I'm already agree with the answer, sorry. The, this must be the nucleophile, right? Because oxygen is a lone pair. That's sitting on the more substituted side. Hydrogen go to less substituted side. So nucleophile going to more substituted side. That's a more called nuclear products. So this is not going to be done by the hydroboration. Because if you do the hydroboration, you're going to get the antimers called nuclear products. So this better be done in other way, which is a Oxymercuration, demercuration. But the thing is, what we see here is an alkoxy groups, not OH or R, right? So that's why you probably have to search what you know about the reactions, and you can probably better figure out there's some variation of oxymercuration, demercuration, or alkoxy mercuration, demercuration there, which is uh, you carry out the reactions uh, with the mercury, but not in water, not with the water, with an alcohol. That way, alpha methanol becomes a nucleophile, not water. So how it goes, mercury in the mine is going to be produced. It's going to pull the atom density more from the more substitute side. And then that's the position where this nucleophilic alcohol, that's going to make an attack that opens it up. 
mercury goes less subject to the side, alkoxy moves from the alcohol, moves the more subject to the side. So that methoxy is coming from the methanol. So that we still need to have another step, changing mercury to the hydrogen. That can be done by adding sodium monohydride. We call that step demercuration steps. So this is a nothing but oxymercuries and demercurations. And obviously, that's something that you, I hope you remember. But let's say what happens if you're using a borane. Somehow, you chose the wrong reagent, And then let's see what comes out. Borane, you're adding hydrogen and then these two together, right? But hydrogen goes phasing more substitute side. DH2 phasing less substitute side is a more reasonable approach because it's a strict static driven. So hydrogen is going to be added in the more substitute side, DH2 more less substitute side. You've got to be DH2 on the first carbon. That will be replaced by the OH using hydrogen peroxide and then hydroxide. So it's going to be alcohol here. That's not the same. Not only is not the epoxy, but also this oxygen sitting on the number one carbon, not number two carbon, right? It's a different orientations. So that is something that you can easily see that by choosing a wrong reagent, you're going to end up making a different products. So we like to ask these questions a lot. Because if you already remove the reagent, you kind of have an ease to know what it is. But what if, can you choose wisely? Like if you want to do this, then what are you going to use? And then there's also a possibility that alkoximercuries and demercuration is kind of a variation of oxymercuries and demercuration you forgot about. Then what are you going to do, right? I mean, if you knew it, then of course, the solving the problems in easy. What if you forgot that? Can we do it in other way? So one of the things I want you to do is that if you know about alkoximercuration, demercuration, I mean, I mean, I, I mean oxymercuries and demercuration, then you can still imagine that this mercurium ion is going to get attacked by the water, the same position, the more substitute to the side. You get the OH go to the second carbon. Mercury is going to be replaced by the second step. So you get the OH on the second carbon, almost like this, right? Almost like that. Except this is a methoxy, that's the hydroxy. So we need to change this hydrogen to the methyl group. Only we need to do that to make the right products. So this oxymercury and demercuration give you something that can be used to make the products. So that's not the wrong way. You can do that. But the thing is, do you know how to make this to that? So that is about probably you need to look at. You, I mean, you have to remember that. The things we learn, you still have to you know, remember. One of the way is you need to have a leukophilic oxygen to make an SN2 reaction with a methyl bromide to make this happen. So how to make a nucleophilic uh, nucleophile, meaning that you've got the conjugate base forms of that. By taking these protons away, you use a strong base and you can take it away. Of course, a strong base. Right now, uh, I told you to use it as like a sodium metal or sodium hydride. That will take these high protons away. You get the alkoxide. That's a very good nucleophile. So only thing to use like a methyl bromide, and that makes it attack, this kicks out, that's nothing but SN2 reactions. And then you can make this product. I know this is a longer step. If you remember the alkoxy mercury and demercuration, it's very simple. Even though you don't remember that, you still can do it combining things that you already know. So there's a variety of many answers possible. I mean, some make more sense than the others. So that's kind of our job to figure out, you know, how much positive brain you deserve. But there might be multiple right answers if you want to accomplish something, something like that.